Today in lecture, we're going to look at 15.1 and 15.2. So let's start at 15.1. This is life in the Earth system. The key concept in this section is to know that the biosphere is one of Earth's four interconnected systems. It's the portion of the Earth that is inhabited by life. And that should make sense because bio means life and sphere is, of course, the Earth. So biosphere includes all ecosystems. But it's one of the Earth's systems. So here's the biosphere. It includes the biota. So if bio means life, biota means all the living things within the biosphere. There are three other systems. We have the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, and the geosphere. So the hydrosphere is the water ball, which is the water, ice, and water vapor. The atmosphere is the air that goes around the Earth's solid and liquid surfaces. And then we have the geosphere, which is the geological features above and below the surface of the Earth. And this picture shows all three of those, the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, and the geosphere. All four of Earth's systems are interconnected. This is called the Gaia hypothesis, and this considers Earth actually as a living organism, which is just a weird concept, I think. But this is uh, one of those hypotheses out there that you need to be aware of as a biology student, the Gaia hypothesis. Um, Earth systems inter interact to yield a biosphere that's capable of supporting life, and this was developed by a man named James Lovelock and by Lynn Margulis. And um, strange concept, but you at least need to be familiar with it for the test. Section 5.2 is on climate. The key concept is that climate is a key abiotic factor that affects the biosphere. Remember when we put the A in front of a word in science, it changes it to not. So abiotic means not biotic factor. Climate is the prevailing weather of a region. It's a long-term pattern of weather conditions. It includes things like average temperature, precipitation, the humidity. And what determines the climate actually is um, a lot of different things. But there are key factors that shape an area's climate, such as the temperature, the sunlight, the amount of water that that area gets, and the wind. And um, if you were to listen to the news and they would do the weather forecast, they're giving you the climate conditions for our area. And then, of course, the Weather Channel is going to cover areas all across the globe. Now, we can look at what's called a microclimate. Remember that micro means very small, so a very small climate. And this is the climate of a small, specific place, but it's found within a larger area. So where these um, fungus are living here inside the knot inside this uh, tree that's probably dead on the forest floor um, would be considered a microclimate. The Earth has three main climate zones. They are the polar, the tropical, and the temperate regions. The polar is far north. The tropical zone um, is around the equator, so we have the polar region here and here, the tropical in the middle, and then the temperate zone is between the polar and the tropic zone. So they have those marked right there and right there. The angle of the sun's rays is what helps determine our climate. So if you have rays that are directly on an area, such as the equator receives, you're going to get a whole different climate than if you have rays that are not at a direct um, interaction with uh, the Earth, such as the polar regions would be. And the tilt of the axis is what plays a big role in seasonal changes. Um, the solar heating causes movement between the air and the water, so we get wind and ocean currents due to solar heating, and the Earth's rotation also affects the winds and the currents. Landmass shape inland climates. Larger changes in temperatures occur, less precipitations occur. In ocean-shaped coastal climates, smaller changes in temperature occur. There's much higher humidity because there's so much water, and there's more precipitation as well. So land masses shape inland climates as opposed to ocean-shaped coastal climates. There's a little bit of difference between the two. And us living in the middle of the United States, we don't uh, necessarily see either one of those. Okay, mountains have an effect on climate. And I know that you've covered this probably um, in Mrs. Curitan's classes as you covered some of the Earth systems. But mountains have an effect. The precipitation occurs um, on the side of the mountain facing the wind. So we have a western slope and we have an eastern slope. And on the downwind side, there's drier, cooler air, and that produces a rain shadow. And a rain shadow is an area of decreased precipitation. And it's obvious from the two pictures that we have here which side's going to receive the precipitation. So the side of the mountain facing the wind would be the western slope in this case, and the eastern slope receiving fewer uh, amounts of precipitation. Many organisms survive in a specific climate due to their particular adaptations. 
So remember that it's due to the climate and the amount of vegetation, type of vegetation, in the different areas that determines the wildlife that lives there. So that's all that uh, Section 15.1 and 15.2 have to offer. So what you need to do is, after watching this video, to fill in your notes that you have and go ahead with the uh, assignment with your lab partner.